Well, I, it's, I, 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 yeah, yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is today we are on the acquia podcast the acquia podcast is where we talk about drupal especially uh open source community technology business and the intersection between all of these things i am really thrilled to be talking with richard miller and tom kitchen why don't you two take a moment to introduce yourselves and uh, tell us just a little bit about what you do. Okay, hi, I'm uh, Richard Miller. I'm a software engineer for Centfield Labs UK. And I guess a lot of what I do is sort of, uh, training, consultancy, sort of internal coaching, things like that, um, around the Symphony framework mainly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so based sort on of internal, external training, go out to sort of see clients, audit, um, audit my projects, and give them some advice and help with uh, sort of symphony best practices and other kind of you know general PHP best practices. Uh, hi, I'm Tom Kitchen. Uh, I'm also a software engineer at Sensia Labs UK. Um, I guess I'm not so much sort of consultancy and training. I'm much more uh, direct development. Uh, in particular, I've done a number of the Drupal projects that we've done here, uh, and was, I guess, in the, also involved in our one major foray into Drupal 8 so far. So that's mine. How about um, one of you compare PHP when you got started to where we are now with PHP 5.4, 5.5? Um, well, I think there's been a huge a huge difference from then, I guess. When I first started the work was on four, so we kind of had objects and um, things like this, but mm. kind of, so you know. And then, um, so obviously things improved with five from that point of view. And then, sort of from a tenth point of view, I guess things like five three, adding namespaces and all these, um, things like that has made a big difference. But I think there's also been like a huge shift in um, terms of people's interest in kind of best practices and things like this that have come from elsewhere and certainly the sort of current generation of um, PHP frameworks are a huge leap forward from certainly where we were when we started, but even where we were perhaps a few years ago. And especially with things, you know, um, things like Composer that have made a huge difference now that we actually have proper patch, you know, proper package management tool. Well, we did have one before, but you know, it's, it's definitely changed how we work. So um, and it, I think it really helped, um, amongst other things, is kind of um, fostered this sort of idea, a lot more interaction between different communities. I think previously as well within PHP, it was all very fragmented into, you know, you use this framework or that framework or that, whereas now it's a lot more um, sort of interoperability between all these different groups. And it's, I think we've come on leaps and bounds in the last sort of, in the last few years, certainly. So Tom, how does it feel for you to watch PHP mature and take on um, the aspects of a, of a, of a grown-up programming language? I feel like there's a lot of words being put in my mouth here. <laughs> um, so uh, it's certainly, I, I recognize, like, I feel like I see a lot of um, things in PHP now, which I was seeing coming into you know, uh, things like Java previously. I guess I don't have, in terms of direct industry experience, I'm relatively recently out of university, so I can't really speak with sort of guru-like confidence here. But um, uh, I think it's I think it's good that it's bringing it all the structure. I think that um, it's, it's one of those things where we, obviously, we need to have a degree of kind of a plan, I guess, since this runs everything now, you know, it, um, apart from anything, the difference between, the main difference to me between the desktop stuff I was doing with Java and the web stuff is that the web stuff actually gets used. Um, 
that's kind of the main one. You know, we're really, really web-based these days. So if you write this monolithic Java app, and you know, the ones I worked with were interacting with the web. It was, you know, sort of all um, uh, Jetty and Tomcat stuff to interact with it. But it's still this sort of enormous construct. It's sort of an iceberg where people are only seeing the very, the very tip as it comes out of the water into the web, and everything else is just no one ever sees. So. That's kind of, from my perspective, that was the big difference, was just going into things that people are actually using. What should other people know about PHP, and what should people know about Symfony? As frameworks go, it leaves quite a lot um, to your choice still. It's, uh, so it's helping provide the sort of tools to sort of avoid having to do all those repetitive tasks involved with sort of making websites or passing URLs to work out how to reach controllers and things. But it, compared to some of the, say, all the frameworks I've used and um, looked at it, it's then less opinionated about how you actually do things within those sort of controller actions. So it gives you a bit more freedom to work kind of in the way you want and separate code and organize it um, in the way that suits you rather than sort of dictating that sort of approach, which, and that kind of approach of dictate, you know, kind of saying, um, Dictating the way you work and things can help. I think at first in projects, it really, you know, um, having everything kind of laid out for you can get you up and running a lot quicker. But then I, you tend to find yourself fighting against the sort of constraints of the framework over time. And I think with Symfony, it's perhaps there's a little bit of a super learning curve at first, but you don't run into so many of those sort of, oh, but you just can't do that sort of problems that um, I think you do face with other frameworks. Hmm, that sounds um, that sounds a lot like the way a lot of us talk about Drupal too. So so that sounds um, that sounds great actually. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So I think um, so I can actually kind of tie in uh, good things and kind of things to to think about, I guess. Because um, I think one of the better things about PHP is that people can, I guess, get into it easily. It feels like a big, a kind of a current big discussion point almost is bringing people into development, bringing people into you know, all this sort of field, um, we want more people to take an interest always, and PHP is, is, is a good language to get into. Uh, the thing to keep in mind then is, is the off repeat point, you know, the first thing you do with PHP, that's not how you do PHP. <laughs> Please don't keep doing that. Um, the easy introduction is not how you want to continue, but it's nice that we can get people involved and then hopefully quickly say, okay, and now don't do that, do this. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, a, yeah, it's an easy entry point into I mean, you're not having to, I mean, I guess this is true of other scripting languages, but it's easy to do something with PHP and see the results. It's not like Java or something where you've got yeah. to compile it and things. Yeah, you know. exactly. like there's a lot of layers in, other lang in many other languages between writing some code and actually getting something, which is, it kind of makes it hard to introduce people to. Mm. And I guess, which I appreciate we're not the only language to have it, but, um, you know, things like this sort of built-in web server help with that, but even in the past, it's, so, you know, all these MAMP and XAMPP and things that give you a, a working sort of LAMP stack pretty pretty easily without you needing to know a lot of the um, a lot of the background certainly help, I think, helps people get into it in a way, but certainly a lot more difficult with, um, especially with sort of compiled languages. So, on to Sensio Labs. Can you talk about Sensio Labs just quickly and maybe the relationship to Symfony? Yeah, okay, absolutely. So the original Symphony framework, so sort of Symphony 1, um, grew out of, was essentially a the in-house uh, framework for uh, Sensio Labs in, um, in France, and they open sourced that, um, and it yeah, sort of went from there, so it was a, one of the popular sort of first generation frameworks. Um, uh, so yeah, now it's an open source thing. There's plenty. There's a lot of top contributors that are from outside the Sensio Labs company. Um, it is uh, sort of Fabian's company, and he's still a, he is the sort of lead on it. I mean, he's still the only person that kind of has the final merge on uh, things into it. Um, so I guess Sensio Labs sort of role in this tends to be, you know, is one of providing. Um, so support around that training, um, sort of training, coaching, um, consultancy, 
an auditing of um, reports as well as sort of providing a few uh, sort of tools like the Sensio Labs Insight and Desktop uh, tools that can aid work in Symfony. Um, so Sensio Labs UK is a part, well, it's so part of the Invika group in the UK. So um, Sensio Labs UK itself is uh, sort of jointly owned by Sensio Labs in France and the Invika group in the UK. Is Symphony going to benefit or improve Drupal, and if so, how? So I guess from a technical point of view, the, you know, there's Symphony components that have been used. At, so I guess it's meant that from the Drupal community, we've not had to kind of re, you know reinvent the wheel, so we've been able to concentrate on the more Drupal specific stuff, um, and sort of gain you know make use of components that are part of a, a stable framework that's already a new out there and has had various changes through different versions based on people's real, you know real experiences of using it. So with Symphony 1.4, I think there was an introduction of a kind of de uh, some dependency injection and stuff, but then 2 was kind of rebuilt from the ground up with that sort of stuff in mind, with the event system, which um, I believe Drupal 8's using and some of the more core stuff um, to kind of replace as much use, some of the use of hooks. Uh, so I think from that point of view, there's lots of stuff. I think there's also the benefit from bringing sort of communities so sort of close together and we're learning lots of stuff from Drupal and certainly there's been stuff contributed back from sort of Drupal community in Symfony. So I've gone to a couple of Symfony events in the last few months and there have been Drupalists besides me at every one of those. And when we've spoken together, you know, we'll at the in the in the in the happy hour over a couple of beers, it all the the four or five or six Drupalists all get together in a little circle to to talk about you, and um, everyone is is saying, oh, I had this idea for this project that I never could have done before, and I'm here to learn how to do that, or I got to you know we've got all these things in here now, so I got to go meet the people who are making it. And by the same token, at a couple of Drupal events recently, I've run into. Symphony service providers. So the, the communities are getting excited about each other and I've seen that firsthand and I, I think it's great and I'm really hoping that people like you will come to DrupalCon and do more Symphony sessions. So that's gonna be fun. Um, let's ask the reverse question for a moment. Is Drupal going to improve Symphony and if so, how? Um, well, I think there's already, we've already seen um, improvements from the point of view of sort of contributions back from the Drupal community. So we've certainly um, benefited from those. I know there was, uh, there's been some work around the routing component and a separate kind of component that's been the kind of joint work of people from Drupal, um, Easy Publish, and the sort of Symphony CMF project, which is um, Kind of content management at a lower level, sort of components for building um, for building a CMS rather than a CMS. But they've all been kind of working together to uh, sort of on this sort of routing system. And I think a lot of um, experience and sort of knowledge from earlier versions of Drupal has sort of has um, benefited that greatly. Yeah, I think more than anything, more than anything, there's the the, the, the merging, not merging, but the interaction of the communities can only cause both of the projects to improve. This is what open source is all about, right? This is all about the free exchange of information, of good ideas, of, of development work. This is this is what makes it work. So, like more than anything, that's got to be the big advantage that both sides can get from this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and the Drupal community is huge from uh, what we've heard. You know, things like that. Um, the sort of joint, well jointly held conferences last year in Portland, so sort of Symphony, uh, Symphony Live and DrupalCon, was it, or um, one at the same time, but uh, yeah, sounds like the, uh, the Drupal one quite dwarfed the Symphony one. <laughs> so.